Zibrumas também. Zibrumas também. Zibrumas também. Zibrumas também. Back with another public service announcement. Back with another public service announcement. Hey! 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 Hey!
whatever they do, it's really out of this box. Like you, mm. you can see very common things in Europe. You can see common things in America, but in Japan, it's very unique. You know, some uh, some some South Africans or Cape Townians, you might you might wave at the child and they might give you a. You don't, don't you don't know that one. You don't know that one. They know that yeah. one. It's a smile and it's just no smile. Yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, okay, so that's cool. And now also now I do know so you've been very active about, you know, your Palestinian movement. I even like your cup. I mean your mug over there. Um, you've been talking about it a lot online. What's what's that been like? Um, I mean you're out in Dubai, you're talking about um, the Palestinian movement and things like that. What's what's that been like for you? Honestly, I've always been um, vocal about Palestine. Yes. Even way before October seventh. Um, living in America, we used to have a very small um, Arab Muslim community where we'd always get, uh, we would always come together on once a month and we would do a protest about Palestine. Okay. Ever since I was a child. Yeah. So when I moved to Dubai, um, my wife is actually from Abu Dhabi, she's Emirati, and she told mm. me on the 8th or the 9th, she was like, do you see what's happening in Palestine? And mm. I was like, what's happening? I turn on this news because I like I don't like to watch the news. Okay. Turn on the news and I see like, you know, this parasailing happening and Hamas and all this. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. It looks like a movie to me. Yes. It, I don't believe it. That when they, when they, when they, when they came in on when, the... When they came on the... Yes, For me, I would, did not believe it at all. So having my humor and the way I am, it's just like, I was, I made a joke. I made a, not a joke, but I made like a very... I'm very sarcastic, but okay. my sarcasm has truth to it. Yes. Yeah. Only people who understand me will understand where I come from. I, I form like I turn to jokes to, to hide pain. To hide pain. No, I got you. You know, just I to think be lots positive. Of people do that. Yeah. Yeah. So I went on <laughs> went online and I was talking about. I said I have a question for Israel, you know, and Hamas. My question was, when the when the Hamas came in on parasailing. When they took the hostages, did they go back parasailing or did? Oh, they... how did they leave? Yeah, yeah, no, like because for me, if I was a hostage, that's a valid question. If I was a hostage mm. and Hamas took me, I don't want to go back in a car. I want to go back how they came in on because yes, seeing Gaza from the top is very important. Mm. So then for me, because I didn't believe the mm. whole story, the whole scenario, yeah. I thought it was just made up just for them to take land because I'm very much practical and I understand politics to an extent to know that people do things for their own personal gain. Yes. So I don't I don't watch the currently what's going on. I look about what why is this happening mm. and where do they want to reach? I I I cut the story short. I yes. cut the I cut the BS. Well, we can clearly see what's happening. Yeah. I don't I look at this whatever they're showing us on news mm. is them trying to tell us this is what it is. But what it actually is is they want to seize more land. Yes. That's basically what it is. Yes. This was all done just to get what they want. Mm -hmm. And for me, I made a joke of them, obviously not the Palestinians. And know? was it, I mean, did it have any backlash? Um, from the Zionists, absolutely a lot. Mm -hmm. And from the Palestinians, they actually like, they like, you know, we never saw someone put it in this way. So they, 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 they took it as me taking a stand. And then I start talking more seriously, you know, and I was like, I kept speaking about humanity. One of the things that I would say is that if we lose our humanity, then we're no, no longer humans. Yes. Then we're a bunch of animals. That's what we are. Mm -hmm. If we don't... If you don't have feeling, for me, it's not about Muslim, Christian, Jewish, Zionist, whatever. Mm. For me, it's about humanity, right? 100%. So if it was the opposite situation happening, if it was the Jewish being attacked by the... You say the same thing. I will defend the Jewish 100%. 100%, yeah, I got but that. But I always stand for the people who are being victimized and who are be treat, being treated as second-class citizens. You know, when I remember just the other day, this one uh, Zionist took one of my videos and reposted. They keep doing this. You know? Okay. So they to have to so, uh, get me hate, you know? They follow you. Yeah. Okay. So to get me hate, and then I didn't know what they were, what was written, you know? So I asked one of my friends who speaks Hebrew to read for me what was written. And basically what she said, who's going to tell him, who's going to tell me yes. that we hug them, meaning Palestinians. Palestinians, yeah. We give them bread, meaning Palestinians, and we give them hot, we give them chocolate. Excuse me? Huh? You you hug them? Oh, thank you so much. What? You give them bread? Oh, wow. You give them chocolate? Oh, <laughs> it's too much. Why don't you just give them back their land then, and go? And then let them go, yeah. <laughs> what did we say? Also, what, they so, taught me that, a slang. Was that they the way she was, was huh? um, how can I say? No, um, it's like. She's trying to justify. No, it's she's trying, like, excuse me, who, like the way she's speaking is as if she's speaking about animals. It's not humans. Yes. I give them bread. Who are you to give them bread? They don't need your bread. They want their land back. Yes. Give them their, keep your bread and give them their land. Good deal, you know? So now as, as it got as it gotten you more and more it's from the other side. Hmm? Your I mean your stance on, on Palestine, has it gotten you more it? And initially it did. It is, yeah. But 
ultimately people were like, wow, this guy is using his voice, mm. his platform for the right reason. Look, but globally, I mean, it's huge now. I mean, so many Honestly, people. Are... I, I, my first video for, um, for defending the Palestinians was released on Instagram, I think on the 9th of October. Okay. Um, I mean, previous, I mean, about that subject, I mean, mm. right. And initially I've lost 7,000 followers, but I've gained, I gained thousands of followers more afterwards. Okay. This is the way I looked at it. Yes. Right? Honestly, I wanted to remain silent. I'm like, you know, just, it's not, it's politics. It's messy. You don't want to offend anyone. You're on Netflix. You don't want any, you know, issues or whatever. And then I thought about it. I'm like, I'm a true believer in God. Yes. Right. And I'm a true believer in religion in general. I respect everyone who follows the religion, no matter what religion they follow. Yeah. Why? Because they have, we call it an Arabic map that they have an, a, a base in life. A base, yeah. You know, they have something, they have someone to fear that is not watching them. They have a God to fear, yeah. right? So that means you can be friends with them. People who don't have a God, who don't, it's kind of scary. Like, yeah, what, they, well, you, don't you can expect anything, anything from them, yeah. yeah? So I, I, I respect them, but I keep them away. Mm. Like, I don't become very close with them, I would say, because I have people who are atheists and I respect them for their belief. I listen to them, I hear their argument, I keep it away. Anyways, so um, I looked at myself and I was like, I have a platform. Yeah. The platform that I have, this 800,000 followers, which is not much compared to others, but for me it's a lot because I have I really I really love every one of them. Yes. Okay. When I said I have this platform, it was given to me by God for a reason. There's a purpose for everything in life. I did not search for it. I was... I got put on Dubai Bling. I was recruited. I wasn't auditioned. Okay. You know, they came to me. So I said, God did that for a purpose. And I am currently being tested with a genocide. Mm. I'm not being tested with someone stealing and not telling the police that someone stole. No, I'm being tested with a genocide. With, a genocide, yeah. with thousands and thousands of people, well, millions of people displaced, thousands murdered. And I'm supposed to stay quiet about it for what? Makes no sense. For yeah. brand deals? Yeah. I will create the brand. What? Because of Netflix? I told Netflix, if you, if yeah, whatever, my follow -up if whatever you pay you me, anything. this is what I told them. I said, if they, no, Netflix is completely, they said, as long as you don't involve yourself in any like, you know, illegal things. Yes. You're free. You're free. I'm an American citizen. Okay. I have the right for freedom of speech. It's my opinion. Mm. This is how the world is made is by people having their opinion and up and speaking about it. Mm. And as hard as it is, as much as I'm speaking, as much as I'm doing, as much as I'm screaming in these protests and these um, marches, nothing is happening. Does that mean I'm gonna be quiet? No, I just have to scream louder. Scream louder, yeah. Because every every time in history, we learn from our from history and from their mistakes. Yes, it's it's embarrassing that the world has to go through another apartheid. It's embarrassing that we have to go through a genocide. It's embarrassing that we have to go through war, right? But us as humans, if we all don't do collectively do something, I always say, today it's them, tomorrow, tomorrow it's us. Tomorrow it's us, yeah, for sure. If we can, if we can allow a government, a so-called world-recognized government, to murder thousands of children until this second, right now, this current moment, kids are dying. Mm. If we can sit down and be quiet about it, then we don't deserve to live on this earth, mm. honestly speaking. And it's no longer Palestinian or Israeli anymore. It's literally so you might not it's, know. It's it's literally humanity or no humanity. That's mm. all it is. There's no other way. There's no in between. There's no it's complicated. There's no it's not I don't want to deal with it. There's no I don't want to think about it. No. You're either for humanity or you're, you're against not for humanity. Me. You know what? I actually had this conversation with someone uh, just a couple of weeks ago as well. I was thinking about the same thing. Imagine, like, I mean, what we've been seeing online. And like you say, today it's them, tomorrow it's us. Imagine that same kind of thing was happening where you're staying right now. Mm. How, how would you respond to that? And everyone in the world is just like, they're staying quiet about it. And like, they're staying quiet. And yeah. you know, in the meantime, also, I'm living in Dubai. I yeah. am. I I see myself as a representative of Dubai, so I do getting. I am getting a lot of backlash from people around the world saying, "What is Dubai doing about it?" But well, what is Dubai doing about it? So Dubai. much. Dubai yeah. actually, honestly, Dubai. From what I've seen, Dubai is doing the most. Okay. Okay. Dubai. The United Arab Emirates signed a peace treaty with Israel way before the October seventh. Uh, it was about two years before, right? Mm -hmm. The reason why the UAE signed that peace treaty is they signed the peace treaty because they said we had 75 years of unrest. Mm. 
What if we sign this treaty and we can push for a Palestinian state and we push for peace? Their initiative was 100% for the favor of Palestine, not against Palestinians. Yes. However, a lot of Palestinians, a lot of people, they took it as, no, you don't talk to the enemy. Maybe we should talk to the enemy. Yes. We've been doing this for 75 years. Let's try a different formula. For me, when I do business, I try something, doesn't work. I try a different business. Mm. Okay. And the UAE in, uh, intention, especially the ruler, uh, Mohammed bin Zayed, when he came into power, it was his dream. Every, every Muslim Arab leader in the world wants to solve the Palestinian issue. Mm. They want to. Why? Because it's a huge issue. If you get credit for it, for solving the issue of Palestine, you'll be forever rem remembered yes. in the books of history. So the UAE is sent an entire hospital to Palestine. The UAE has sent the most who sends the aid to Palestine. Saudi Arabia sends funds and aid. But the thing is, is that the Zionists' behavior is to turn people against each other, right? Okay. So what they've done you. is they went and they created bots. Zionists are the best at social media, okay. okay? They've created millions of bots to go on posing as GCC nationals, speaking against Palestine and Palestinians okay, to make everyone collectively hate and turn against each other. So I tried my best- What are Arab countries doing? What are they doing? Exactly. Okay. What are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing? <laughs> Obviously, they're not gonna send their troops. Think yes. about it. Let's think logically, right? First of all, it's not Israel. Israel is an extended state of the United States of America. Yes. They just haven't officially said it yet. Yes. But we know. I mean, as an American citizen, as an American citizen, I'm telling you, yes. Israel is another state of the United States of America. Okay. So they can't say it. Why? Because it's just like, for example, when, when they opened Guantanamo Bay, you know Guantanamo yes. Bay? Jail. Yeah. They, re they opened that jail outside of the U.S. so they can do things to those illegally yeah. that is not allowed to be done Torch on, the, on, the, on, this, on the United States. Yeah, on the, on American so soil. Israel can do all the killing in the name of Israel so it doesn't get America dirty. Yes. But it's all American weapons. It's funded. It's not even paid for. It's free. It's, it's free. a tax. Okay. So that's one of the reasons why I left the U.S. and I went to Dubai because I didn't want to be a part of that. Mm. You know? So what they're doing is trying to confuse people and to remember who's, who's actually doing all this. I met with a chi Chinese politician and the Chinese politician, uh, growing up in America, we always said, don't go to China, it's communist, they'll kill yes. you, right? When I met with a Chinese politician, he changed my entire perspective of the world by one question. He asked me, how many wars has China done? What? None. Yeah. None. None. Yeah. So how are they the communist? How are they the enemy? They didn't do any war, but U.S. is constantly going at war. So we have to speak, especially me, as an American citizen, mm. it's my duty to speak and to tell my government, we don't want war anymore. We don't want no more killing. But what do you see? I mean, what do you, what do you feel is going to be the outcome of all of this? Though? I mean, I mean, considering now everything's been going, I mean, this is just... So this is the way I look at opinion. things. Yeah. So the whole world is controlled by probably 500 people. Yeah. They plan everything what's happening now from the past 50 years. Sometimes they plan ahead, ahead of 100 years. Okay. One thing they didn't plan for was social media. They didn't know that one day there's something called social media, there's something called influencers. They're going to go out and they're going to speak. Israel made the world believe that there's nothing called Palestine. Yeah. The majority of the world didn't know there's something called Palestine. But because of what they've done, the whole world now know it's Palestine because of social media. Because of, yeah. because of those videos popping up left and right. And they tried their best to censor it, to, kite, to hide it, uh, to give uh, shadow banning. And they did it to me too. I was shadow banned you know? too. Yeah. They tried their best, but we're too many. There's way too many, yeah. There's too many humans. I mean, they're still protesting as we speak. We'll yeah, there's too many. So people were like, what they've done is, what, what they've done is, all they've done is they created more awareness about Palestine. So literally Israel went back 75 years. Yeah. So for 75 years, they were winning to actually, they would tell me, like I would go to school, right? At one point I was telling me I was Palestinian in school. I'll go to school and like in high school, and like where are you from? Palestine. Palestine. The teacher would tell me, there's not just thing called Palestine. The teacher used to tell me. Teacher used to tell me. Geogra Porter, well, geographic I mean, what, teacher would tell me as a student, as a, as a minor. Crazy. There is not such thing called as Palestine. Get out of my classroom. So was that in their syllabus to, to, to make sure that people like to, to, to remove it from the history books? They like removed that. it all. I took all the books. I paid my friend money and I said, write Palestine, cross out Israel, write Palestine. Okay. And I, then I got, I got suspended from school. My parents had to put me in private well, school. Well, there's an early, early, early form of protesting. <laughs> this is Palestine. Yeah. I was insisting, you know, because yeah. you cannot delete history. You can't. 
if you want to put Israel, you want to acknowledge it, no problem, put Israel, but why don't you put Palestine? Mm. There is more than 10 million Palestinians displaced internationally since 1948. Yeah, this land crazy. has been taken from them. But I mean, do you see, do you personally, I'm just, this is my just opinion based, do you see an end to all of this? Do you, do you, do you see, and if so, what do you think could the solution be? Like, how, how are they going to work on the solution? If everyone does something wrong, does that make that wrong right? Yeah. No? It doesn't. Yeah. So I don't care if I'm the last person standing to defend Palestine in the world, I'm going to defend it until my grave. Okay. Because this is what I truly believe is right. All we can do is peacefully protest, peacefully demand a ceasefire, peacefully demand rights. I don't want to see chaos in the streets. And unfortunately, the way things are happening, people are getting frustrated. Mm. You cannot come tell someone to shut up when they have lost their parents. When I see these Palestinians, these videos, I don't see myself better than them. Yeah. I put myself, I am them. I am them, 100%. And I put mentally placed the faces of the children in my family who I love on those dead and beheaded children. And I said, what if that, what if that happened to one of ours? One of ours, yeah. What would I do? Will that make me a terrorist? It probably would. Mm. It probably will make me so crazy that I'll just go around killing anyone in a uniform of a soldier. Yeah. Think about it. No, for Put sure. the children that you love, your own children's faces I, I, on I those kids. So many times. Like, sometimes I can't that's watch someone's those child that's yeah. buried under that rubble. Those are people, those are humans that mm. play and have games and and eat and they poop and they pee and they do just like everything else. They're humans. Mm. And sometimes I'm watching that news and I'm thinking I'm watching a horror movie. Yeah. And I don't look for this. I it just pops up every time. I know. I can't even watch some of them myself because I, I get that feeling. It's all the time. it's not it's motivating. I don't members. sometimes I was the most positive, most motivational person before October seventh. Mm. But seeing this, I'm like, do I want to live in this world anymore? Do I want to have children? Am I able to protect my children? Because they'll see this kind of things too, and like. Is that normal? How can I explain it? If I had a child and my dad, what am I going to tell them? That we're, we're, we're living in a world and there's monsters in it? Yeah. Netanyahu is just a murderer and he's over there killing innocent children like it's like just for land? Mm. There's so much land. Can't you just go, like, can't take all the, the Zionists to Antarctica and yeah. go in the cold? I don't know. No, Ar but do you on, on the, there's empty land everywhere. On a religious perspective, do you think there's a reason they want that specific land? No, I tell you what they want. No. They want that land because what they do is they're like a cancer. Okay. They start and they keep spreading, right? There, if you look at their chants, the Zionist chants, and I'm saying Zionist, Zionist for a reason. Yes. Jews are amazing people. Yes. I my teacher in high school was was Jewish, and she was the only one that was kind to me. Okay. I've worked with Jews. I've dealt with Jews. They are absolutely amazing. Very good in business. You can learn a lot from. Them. They're amazing and they're great people. What I'm saying is Zionists is people who are for the state of Palestine and for the destruction, sorry, the state of Israel and are for the destruction of Palestine. That's yes. what I say Zionists, okay? No, for sure. The, all this is, I mean, there's a big acute difference. Some, some, yeah, so what they want- If you believe in Judaism, yeah. you believe in Judaism. If you listen to their chants, yeah. okay? The reason why we say from the river to the sea is because that's what Palestine is. From yes. the, but it does not, it's not anti-Semitism and it doesn't mean that Israelis or Jews have to die, no. They can coexist and they can live with Palestinians in peace. Okay, mm -hmm. Palestinians will never treat any other religion or nationality as a second-class citizen because it's not in our religion. Yes, it's not in Islam, it's not in Christianity, and it's not in Judaism. Okay, this only exists in Zionism. Zionists believe that they are the chosen ones and that everything is for them and that this land was promised them. Blah blah blah. blah. Yeah. What they want is they want Gaza because it's on the ocean. Yes. First of all, it has natural resources. They just found the oil offshore of Gaza, okay? Which is something like $50 billion, $500 billion okay. worth, something like that. And they want this, they wanna take this, they wanna um, extract this oil. And at the same time, they have an overall plan to create a passageway through Gaza, okay? So that way they don't have to use a Swiss canal anymore. So it's a political, geographical political well, issue. Okay. And but at, and initially, at, at, Ultimately, the Jews are the Zionists, and particularly chant. They have a river, I believe it's in Iraq, all the way down to the Nile. They said that's their land. So they're not going to stop. Is this according to their own? The, it's according to their book, according to their yeah. belief, okay. that their land 
which is the land of Judea or Judaism, whatever, mm-hmm. is from a river in Iraq all the way down to the Nile. So they want more than Palestine. And so you, you see this. Go from there, they, they, they they've, taken, from the- they've taken land from Lebanon. They've taken land already from Syria, the Golden okay. Heights. They've been fighting for it for forever. Like, but we don't, there's a lot of things that we don't, they don't put on the news. We don't hear about all of these things, yeah. You don't hear about it, but this is actually, they actually want more than what they actually have. Mm-hmm. And if you look at the capacity, right? Look at the population of Israel. Look at the population of Palestine. Palestinians are crammed into these area. Gaza was an open air prison for 17 years. Look, and I'm missing the last part was Rafa, and that's like at the end. Yeah, and when they say Hamas this and Hamas that, I'm so sorry. I could be in trouble for saying this. Yeah. But I think they created Hamas. Yeah. Look, that's, I mean, there's lots of conspiracy theories. There's about a lot that, of theories. And that. for me, I just don't believe that such a power of the world's most powerful army can allow a bunch of people to come in on a paragliding? A paragliding and just, yeah. No, in broad daylight. Like for me, if it was nighttime, I can be like, okay, they were sleeping. It makes but sense. It was yeah. daylight. Like, In the day. They're obviously coming from there. These settlers have guns. And no one's been able to... And no one got the gun and start shooting so, back? Yeah. They just let them into their house and play with their dog or whatever. Mm. And this story about 40 beheaded babies, this one killed me. I, and there's still no proof I, of this. I made a video, right? So I made a video about this. was funny. So I made this video about the 40 beheaded babies, right? Mm. And I was like, I was so angry, so passionate. I was like... Where are these 40 headed babies? Where's the parents? It had to be 40, couldn't be 39. Blah, blah, where's blah. the yeah, where the family members? So the pictures, the only pictures that was re- re- received was AI generated burnt babies. I saw that as well. I put it on blast. Okay. And this lady, a journalist in Dubai, which I know who's Israeli, calls me right away. She's like, delete that post and blah blah blah. blah. Don't go down this route. And da, 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 da. I'm like, I was born a free man, and no one's gonna take my voice. As long as I'm speaking correctly. As I'm speaking politely, as I'm not in, in putting inciting hate onto violence. everyone, yeah. inciting violence, creating an uprising. No, I'm just stating the obvious. And how did she take that? Uh, she kept trying to convince me back and forth, but she wasn't going to win the argument. Now, after all these months, and there's no proof of these 40 babies. She told me she saw the 40 babies. There is no proof. And listen to her her justification. Mm. Oh, as we Jews, we don't like to show our dead because it's disrespectful. Oh, but it's okay to kill them. Okay, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay to kill other people. So that only goes to show you that their behavior is narcissistic, yes. and that they believe that they're the only chosen people to be on the earth just by the way they speak. Mm. They always put themselves in this in this problem. Like the one lady who said about me, she was like, "We hug them and we give them bread and give like them chocolate." Is like they're peasants, a different species. Excuse or something. me. Yeah, Palestinians are some of the smartest people in the world. Mm. Did you know that? Every Arab country was going to Palestine for university. Okay. In 1948, or prior to 1948, Sheikh Zayed used to go to Palestine because of uh, Al-Quds and, and because of the pilgrimage. They used to go visit and they used to visit universities there. They used to request the head of the classes of the universities in Palestine to go work and to be holding high positions in the GCC to create the GCC. Okay. Palestinians created something called Kuwait. Mm. Palestinians were the teachers, were the architects who worked in Kuwait who, to create Kuwait. And they call Kuwait the door of the Gulf because they are the first Gulf country who made malls and bring brands and did so much, you know? But we don't learn. We All this history about Palestine no, no, yeah. is trying to be removed. Pan, uh, what was it? The American Airlines, um, Pan Air... I think it's no longer now, but they used to ha- they have a flyer that I saw online that was like, visit the Holy Land, visit Palestine, Jerusalem. That was one of the first flights was to Palestine. They had the first time, airport, yeah. hospitals, everything. It was a developed country. And the Zionists are trying to make us think that it was basically a wasteland and it was no one had no one had right to it and it was it was it was owned or managed or whatever by the British. Mm. It's not true. So, yeah, that's, I mean, considering everything that you also just said, now, I mean, I think that's also an eye-opener for lots of people, just in terms of the history and things that we should know. But again, and so now, I know you've been doing the hike as well. Or were you, have you done it? Or are you still? It, we did it yesterday. You did it? it How, yesterday? Was it yesterday? It was amazing. Um, I mean, and that was also for what you obviously trying to bring awareness to what's happening in Palestine. Yeah. What's, when that, what's that been like? Um, I think... I don't have to bring awareness for Palestine in South Africa. Yes. I believe South Africa knows. But for me, in, 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 in the UAE, we don't allow any type of protests. Right now? In general. 
The, okay. the law in the GCC is there's no protest for any situation. Doesn't matter what it is. Why? Because they're not. They don't do. They don't have riot police. They cannot control the crowd. Okay. Emiratis themselves are. Um, they're not. The majority are actually foreigners. So Emiratis are probably twelve percent of the population, mm. and those are the police and those are the government workers. So you cannot like. They cannot sustain if there's so, anything uh, was to go wrong. But if they if someone if they should do something like that, I mean, there should be a big riot or protest. There. Honestly, and I don't. I don't. I really don't think. There's a need for protest in UAE because everyone knows already, right? Everyone knows, yeah. The protests need to happen in places that they are the cause of the problem. UK, the US, yes. Germany, Italy. Those are the people that have to be waking up because we have to remind the Germans that your government is supplying weapons for the genocide. We have to remind Americans that your tax dollar is paying for this genocide. Yeah. So those are the places that should be done, the protests, you know? Yeah. South Africa... They do the protest not just for awareness. They do it just to feel better. To feel better. Every person who I see, they go out and they're hurt and they want to say that I've. They want to feel that I've did something that I've said. I've spoken my voice. But honestly, my true belief is that protests should only be done in Europe and in the U.S. And how do you feel about boycotting brands? Um, religiously, Islamically, boycotting is not necessary. Yes. Right, because. <laughs> Boycotting actually affects a lot of people as well because a lot of different businesses. However, me personally, yeah, you personally. not religiously, I'm all for boycotting. Okay. Why? Because brands should be representing people, not governments. Mm. Brands, who is the customers of brands? The people. The people. Yeah. Not the government. So why are you taking our money that we've trusted you with, that we were a customer, and using it to kill our relatives? Excuse me? Yeah. Why? Makes no sense. Mm. Makes no sense. So these brands, for me, for me, when I'm going to donate money to Palestine, I'm going to donate to the people. I'm not going to give my money to Hamas the government and say fight out. them more. No, I'm not going to use my money. The people I'm not going to use my money for weapons. I'm not going to use my, we my money for weapons. I'm against weapons. I'm against killing. No one should die. Mm. With all the killing that's currently happening in Palestine, I don't believe Israelis should die. I don't feel happy when I see... Uh, rockets going back to Israel. I don't feel happy. No, because those rockets can land on a family. And that can land on a child. Dying, yeah. I am for humanity. And that also means for Israelis, mm. our Jews, our Zionists, whatever. But I just want to stop to this. Mm. And the reason why I speak against the Zionists, because I know their agenda. Yes. But I would not classify a child as a Zionist. He doesn't know what he is. What does he know? Yeah. Just like they, they, they call us, they call the Palestinians human animals and they call the children animals savages. and they call them savages and terrorists. It's okay. That's how you were raised. Mm. But my mom did not raise me to call an innocent child a terrorist. Mm. I have a common sense. I'm a human. You know? No, I got you. And so now... Um, so I'm for boycotting. You're for boycotting. To cut the story short. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'm going to ask you which brands. Never mind that. Um, no, I think okay. I think the, there's so many online... Um, Applications. Applications, you can go check BDS them out. Yeah. And you can check. And, you know, if you have a brand who is supposedly supporting and whatnot, support the one that's not. That's not, yeah. Simple. Stand uh, together. So now also just, just bring it now back now. I'm going to just move it a little bit away from there. Mm. Um, Dubai life versus your, your couple of days here. What are some of the major differences? Where, like in... Cape Town, South Africa. Okay. And Dubai. You, so you spoke a little bit so, about the prices as well. Yeah. You did a, so so Dubai, for you. Dubai, Dubai is safe. Safe, okay. Expensive. <laughs> is it? Look, people say it's very expensive. Is it's it not very, very expensive. expensive. No, no. Yeah. The honest truth is that Dubai, you can get two places. You can have expensive and you can have inexpensive. It depends on what you want. Okay. We have old Dubai, we have new Dubai. Just like every country, you can choose, right? Yeah. But safety is beautiful because you don't have to worry about a lot of things. A lot of things are, it's just basically like. Oh, is there crime? Is there, is there, is there any crime? Crime is, is almost to a zero. For real? I'm not going to say absolutely zero, is but it's almost zero. The, is it because most of the population have money? Nope. Then it has nothing to do with money. There's a lot of money. poor Tell people. There's a lot of average income people. Yeah. It has to do with the way the government is set up and how they allow people into the country. Okay. So our borders are very tight. Okay. Um, the visa process is very vigorous. You have to go through the visa process. Um, you in order for you to work in Dubai, you have to have a medical. So you have to be physically fit. You're not able to have AIDS to live in Dubai. Okay. Um, it's just a part of the medical and making sure that the, the country is safe and um, free of any infectious diseases. Um, so many things. The only thing that Dubai lacks is 
nature. Nature. We have deserts and we have some some greenery, but in the end, it's a desert. It's hot mm-hmm. in the win- in the summer, and it's very beautiful in the in the winter. So, for me, the ideal lifestyle of of a person is to live in Dubai throughout the year as a base and to travel in the summer. This is the most okay. beautiful way of. Of, but I mean, I living. see the way. I mean, obviously, Dubai has been built over the over the years. I mean, it's lots of light. Dubai, honestly, lots of, lots of buildings, I've, lot of pools, lots I, of. I've, I've watched Dubai grow. When I was in America, my father got us a satellite, so I used to watch Dubai TV. Yeah, and I was absolutely astonished by the ruler Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, the ruler of Rashid. Dubai, yeah. and how he's built Dubai. And for me, living in America as an Arab, I was always looked frowned upon. I was like, oh, he's the Arab. His mom is the towel head and they used to make these like rude remarks. Yeah. Always made me feel less than people, even though my mom's American. I said, when I go to Dubai, I wanted to be a part of this New Arab world. legacy. Yeah. yeah. So Dubai put a benchmark for all the other Arab countries and say, listen, we don't have to live by the standards of Europe or the US. We can create our own standard. Dubai has surpassed the level of the US or any European country. Mm-hmm. When it comes to safety, technology, um, municipality, environment, roads, everything, right? Mm-hmm. That's why when we had, um, if you remember, quite we had the rain, right? Yes. And everyone is like, oh my God, Dubai is flooded, Dubai is flooded. Yeah. I'm like, excuse me? Nothing happened to Nothing me. Happened. Yeah. But it, the way they made it, they because everyone always wants to point fingers at the person who's successful. Mm. So when I was getting up, everyone was trying to put me down, put me down, put me down, put me down, put me down. Why? Because... People, when they see failure, they feel comfortable because they feel like, okay, we are failures and they're failures, so we're all okay. We're all failures together. Yeah. Yeah. But winners like to win together, right? So I was, I was, I was laughing when people were like calling me, "Oh, are you okay? Are you? Okay? I'm fine. There's nothing happening. It's a normal. It's, it's, it's that's a, the thing. I guess people with, with the media and things like that. People can also exactly. Just, you can be steered into believing almost anything. Yeah, Dubai is beautiful, and also Cape Town is beautiful. And I came to Cape Town because I want this synergy between us. Yes. I want. South Africans to visit Dubai during our winter because it's it's their summer here. Yeah, and I want. What's your winter even like though? I mean, is it like what's the what beautiful? What's the, deg- what's Honestly, the degrees? What's the what? How much it's you so think? it's so beautiful that all I want to do is sleep outside. It's literally the most in comfortable winter. Temperature. You just want to sleep outside. The winter, it's like 21, 22. Okay, that's a twenty normal day in. <laughs> but it's normal just, day in Cape but Town. it's just so beautiful. Yeah. It's just the weather is just. You don't have to wear a jacket. And you don't have to go half naked okay t-shirt and pants you're fine so the advantage of this you know you guys is winter and summer it's opposite of ours gives a huge opportunity for tourism between these countries i got you and that's why i joined with globe to make sure everyone around the world has a trusted uh company to bring them to south africa and for South Africans to come to Dubai. Yeah, and what's the entertainment? What's the entertainment uh, industry like out there? Entertainment, like as far as like, like let's. I'm talking about clubs, events. Um, I mean, I mean, I've seen I've seen videos of of popped and, and seen some things, but I mean, for someone who loves them and what. Do you so feel- the nightlife in Dubai. So I don't go uh, personally. I'm I only go into a club if it's someone's birthday. Yeah, just not to be disrespectful. Clubbing is not my scene, but mm. I know a lot of people do love it because everyone tells me, like, where do we go when we get to Dubai? Yeah. We have amazing places, honestly. A lot of rooftops, a lot of every time, every weekend there's a new event, a new thing. There's always a new concert. Um, okay, since I have yeah. top even, five places people should visit in Dubai if they've never been. Top if five. Never your, been, your top five Soho, places. Soho Garden. Is Soho really Garden. Nice. Okay. It's really like, it's a good crowd for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have a nice place. Uh, DJ Bliss, DJs in Five Palm. Okay. Which is also, because I don't go there, but I hear, hear a lot of people do go there. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? There's always new places. There's always new places. Like okay. back in the day, like 10 years ago, it was Armani in uh, Armani Club in Armani Hotel yeah. in Burj Khalifa. Um, but I don't know if that's if that's open anymore, but I know that's where everyone was going at that point. But so many have been, Dubai is, there's a that's new a, road, there's a new place. Constantly evolving, constantly, like all the time. I don't want to, I don't want to recommend something that I don't go to because I'm like Ibrahim lied to us, you know? Yeah. But I've been to Soho Garden recently because one of my Singaporean friends likes going there. And they have different places with different like vibes of music. Yeah. Also, um, in Saudi Arabia, they have something called Middle Beast. That Middle was Beast. amazing. So okay. Middle Beast is like, uh, what is that concert in Europe called Coachella? Coachella, yeah. It's like the Arab version of Coachella. Mm. But it's crazy. Like everyone's there. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, there was some backlash about that too. I don't know if you saw. 
I heard, you yeah, know, know, the thing is, listen, Saudi Arabia, everyone knows, because when we when we grew up, right, Saudi Arabia is supposed to be holy land. Yes. This is not all things not allowed, right? But the way the government looks at it is very smart, right? Instead of letting our people go outside, go to America, go to Las Vegas. Because they're going to do it in any case. They're going to do, do it anyways. Okay. They're going to spend money. They're going to lose on that, like why that person not being there. The government said, why don't we find a way to keep our people inside? Instead and of spending at least their money. We can protect them. Yes. I so if, you. let's say if a, if, a, if a Saudi girl leaves, the U, leaves Saudi Arabia and goes to the U.S. to party, right? And because she's not used to it, because she's not doing it in her country. Even that, she might just even be questioned on her way there. Yeah. She might be like gullible where someone puts something in her drink. And yes. then guess what happens? So... Saudi Arabia knows what happens to their citizens outside of Saudi Arabia. Okay, that makes more so sense. So they right? sense, well, listen, every time when you explain something in the right way, yeah. people will understand. But immediately, I know it doesn't sound right. Yes. But when you go down to the detail and say, okay, for example, casinos, it's the same thing in Dubai. Dubai, in the Ras Al Khaimah and Dubai, they're going to start casinos soon, mm. right? People are like, oh my God, so casinos are haram. I'm like, Habibi, it is haram. But people are already doing it. They're going outside to do it. Why let other people make the money? Let it to be here. We can control it. We can make sure it's casinos, but without drugs. Because yes. Dubai is no drugs. No drugs. No joke. Don't, be Don't even think about it. I do if you do think about it, you can be punished. <laughs> I do people do drugs out there. I haven't seen. Yeah. I haven't had friends who did it because I don't hang around anyone. But when you drugs. say it's drugs, when you say drugs, are you talking about like all drugs or like, or like, what, like what's... I don't know much about drugs to tell you. For me, drugs is drugs. Okay. Well, there's so many. That's what I'm just asking. I was like, so you're telling me no one's snuffing cocaine in Dubai? No. Okay. Not that I know of, at least. <laughs> no one that I know. Okay. <laughs> and if they are... I have to pray for them because if they get caught, <laughs> yeah. they are gone. So what happens? So what happens if you, if you get caught with drugs in Dubai? What's the what's the what's what? I don't know. I think it's like twenty five years or something. Twenty five years. I don't know. It's something really bad. Yo. It's so scary that I don't want to think about it. Listen, yes, just remember yeah. you in Cape Town, South Africa. Now I don't want to give you a bad name about this city, but listen, yeah, it's drugs everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I heard. Listen, it's probably like a, enough drugs in there to fall off of the you know, pie. I recently, <laughs> listen, this, I, I recently went to Singapore. Yeah, and I was going to Singapore on the flight. Yeah, they announced on the flight on Etihad Airways on the flight before yeah. you arrived. They said, if you are bringing any type of drugs, including CBD. CBD. Okay. Gummies, edibles, whatever. None if you it. bring anything into Singapore, it is punishable by death. What? I said, oh shit. I said, let me check my bag. I'm sure I'm not. Maybe someone put something inside but there. If those are, if those are, if those are the, 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 law, the laws abroad, I mean, that's about it, eh? Yeah. By what the way, listen, think? I never did drugs. Okay. I never drank alcohol and I never smoked. No mm. shisha, no cigarettes. Just to let you know. Shisha. Fun fact. Oh, they, but they're all puffing shisha in Dubai, right? Mm -hmm. The shishas, they're all smoking. Shisha's big scene. I don't like it. Yeah. Honestly. Vapes are, the, are vapes also a thing? Oh, you guys, you guys are vaping over All these things, I, I'm, all, I'm all against it. But, however, there is a technology that we're working on currently that a brand of one of my friends that owns. You ever heard of Cohiba cigars? Cohiba cigars? No, I haven't. But what so about Cohiba it? cigars is the Rolls Royce of cigars mm. from Cuba. Okay. Right? So they're creating a nicotine put into a liquid and doing it as an e-cigarette, but it's much more safer than the actual burning of the cigar and actually much safer than any type of vaping. 200 certificates of technology and all this, and I'm working on this project. I personally don't smoke, so yes. I don't know how much I can support it, but I do believe that it, it is a better solution than cigarettes. My mm -hmm. father um, had two uh, heart stent surgeries Okay. Um, not open heart, the stents, the yeah. balloons, uh, because of smoking. So I'm a true believer to try to find an alternative to cigarettes. And I believe they said that in the next five years, there's actually going to be no cigarettes. So enjoy so, why it lasts. Nah, there'll be cigarettes here. Yeah. This is Cape Town. This is, this is South Africa. They make it in the home, they'll make it, huh? Listen, this is South Africa. Someone's going to, we're going to get it somewhere. We, we know some friends somewhere. Listen, we just need a couple of ships to just come in this weekend. They're going to get it. I, gonna get it. I remember once yep. we had a maid, my oh. dad had a maid that when my mom, she left uh, for, uh, to, to go to give birth to my sister in America, my mom, my, we had a maid that my dad bring. Yeah. She was rolling cigarettes in our house. I was like, like dad, I don't think she's, I don't think she can work here anymore. I'm like, my dad's like, why? She's, like, she's actually rolling cigarettes. Like, I don't know you can make your own cigarettes. Yes. You can do it. Yeah, just buy some tobacco. <laughs> 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 We've been working the rollies for years. 
Okay, now also on that, I mean, I see you, you're also the owner, Forever Rose Cafe, Forever Oud, Forever Rose London. Tell us a little about this. When did that venture start? We actually have my my family. We have a group of companies. Those companies are my own personal. Yes, your own yeah. personal ones. So I have my personal companies, and then we also have my family-owned companies. Uh, so we're talking about 17 companies, about 350 employees collectively. Okay. Uh, Forever Rose started in 2013. It's basically a, the world's longest lasting roses. We created the, the idea of a luxury florist. Okay. Um, and then in 2013, in 2020, just three months before COVID, we decided to create a cafe. And the cafe, it's uh, this was is actually from our cafe. This is just, we did it um, to support Palestine. But our actual theme of our cafe is black and white. Okay. And everything is like illustrated. Um, so the Palestinian coffee and our design of our cafe actually go hand in hand. Um, and the exciting news, I think this will be the first podcast that I actually officially announced this, yeah. is we are actually starting franchising in the next two months. Uh, so we partnered with one of the world's largest franchising companies uh, that created all the franchises, what we what we know worldwide at the moment. Um, this company is creating, it's called France Corp. So they're creating all of the legal documentations and the formalities of creating a franchise. I ask the team to, to, to make the most affordable franchise possible. The reason why is because I wanted everyone to join the success of Forever Rose. So we trying to, do you trying to go all over? I want it, I want Forever Rose to be in every part of the world and for it for us to remember that this company is based on humanity. On humanity. So it's based on first we take care we're supposed to take care of our employees. We're supposed to work as a family. I'm I wanna go back from this corporate behavior. I don't like when companies put a number on an employee and a system will tell that company to fire that employee. Yeah. That's how they used to do it. I like how, I and mean, that's how to do it now. I like how we used to do it old days, where you actually have a relationship with the employee, with the where person, you talk yeah. to them like a human, where you treat them like, if they if they come to you and they say, I can't come to work because my child is sick. To be compassionate go, of that. To be, be compassionate, to understand. Yeah. To, to These feel, things happen, yeah. I feel so sad of the way the world, like I'm a 90s child, yeah. right? And I, I just don't like the way the world's going. Yeah, We're losing. What, which year you born in the 90s, eh? Actually, I'm born in the 80s, but I'm a 90s child. Oh, so you're not growing up. I was born in 1988. Okay, so you, know, you grew up as a youngster, yeah, teenage in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are the golden days for me. And it was a time, you know, we didn't have social media. We didn't have computers. We talked to each other. We mm. reasoned, you know what I mean? And a lot of things, like a lot of things about technology is great, but I think humans are using their technology for the wrong purpose. Look, so I mean, that's even the, the follow-up thing. And now you see lots of all these things, like if you, if you check out even Netflix specials or just movies in general, it's just like the constant talk about AI, AI, you know, and like the world, obviously. But let's about, admit, Netflix yeah. is very entertaining. No, it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so I, one thing, the reason why I joined Netflix and I was proud to join Netflix is because I knew that Netflix kept people entertained, right? Yes. And... Even though Netflix has a lot of shows, there's a lot of documentaries mm -hmm. that if you watch, it will open your eyes about many things. And I love Netflix because Netflix is not racist in any way or form. Yeah, they've got, they've got everyone they, on there. They have, Netflix to me is the people's network. The people's network. Yeah. Why? Because each region that Netflix is available, they spend according to the amount of population or the amount of subscribers in that region for content for them. For example, yes. there's a lot of movies about Palestine, which Zionists wanted them to remove it from Netflix. And they Netflix we're not removing it because we have Palestinian subscribers and this is what they want to watch. Yes. That's the way Netflix works. Plus, Netflix is a household brand for my family because my mom sitting over there, yeah. was one of the first subscribers of Netflix before it became an online platform. Wow. So in America, we had something called Blackbuster. Yes. So Netflix killed Blackbuster because we would go to Blackbuster on the weekend to rent DVD DVDs or, or, or VHS, right? Yes, we had Mr. VHS. So when DVDs oh. came out, <laughs> so VHS was more heavy. So when DVDs came out, DVDs were more easy to ship. They used to ship them in those, um, those sleeves. The sleeves, so yes. It's like basically nothing. It's like $2 to ship, right? So my mom used to have a, a pre-order list. So she would choose the movie she wants. She'll get three movies. She'll put them back and then she'll get the other three. Okay. So it was like, was the mom $20, $10 a month? The Netflix. Five dollars a month, imagine. Five so my mom's one of the oldest Netflix subscribers. Wow. And yeah. so I mean for you and when you and when you used to, when you did Dubai bling and stuff, what was the um what was the response? What was the response back home though? So initially it was funny because when we were approached, we weren't approached as Netflix. They told me that it's the world's largest platform. Okay. They were not allowed to tell me who. And I signed a contract saying that I'm signing a company called 
signing a project called Dubai Life, yes. of which they told me is about successful businessmen. So for me, I would have never chosen to be on such a show because I'm the opposite of showing things that are bling, you know? Yes. My father and my mom liked me to work as a low profile to kind of be away from the spotlight. Um, but after I signed, then I said, like, oh, wait, this is bling. It's very similar to Blink Empire in the U.S. It's about luxury and 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 wealth and this. So I said to, 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 the, to the team, I want to show who I am. Mm -hmm. What is my relationship between me and my mom? This is who I am. This is what I want to show. I don't want to flock the things that I own because I feel it's not nice to sit there and show things and some people don't have those things. Yes. So I try to be as much... So then, some of the some of the drama and stuff that happened inside the Bibling is it real, or is some of I mean, scripted. Let's, I'm just asking. I'm scripted. interested. Yeah, a lot. Of, this question comes up a lot. Yeah. Because people are like, how can it be? And da 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 da. No, it, the fact is, it's not scripted. Okay. Okay. The fact is, is that we get put together in this place. So people are like, why are you guys so extra? Why is it so dramatic? Yes. There's one obvious thing. So let's address the elephant in the room. There's a camera. Okay. So when the camera is on. Some people are extra. Mm. Now, for me, I'm me. Everyone knows this. Look, people but you know this, but you, you people like get shocked. Things. People get shocked when people see me in the cafe, and like I, someone will come to me and they'll be like, "I remember this girl came all the way from Australia." Yeah, and she came up to me, and I'm like, "She was wearing like socks with slippers." I'm like, "Where do you come from?" She's like, "Australia." I'm like, "You don't have fashion, in Australia?" Yeah. She was laughing so hard. She's like, "You're the same on the show. Like, yeah. you roast everyone. You yeah. know." For me, when I roast people or like when I joke, it's literally to see people laugh. I okay. have I have an obsession. My obsession, everyone has a fetish, has an obsession. My obsession is seeing people happy. Seeing people happy. Seeing Beautiful. people happy makes me happy. I'm I feel sometimes like I have a heart of a dog. Like, you know when he, when when someone is sad, the dog comes up to you and Just cries with you. Yeah. I'm the same way. When okay. I see people sad, I feel with them. So I feel Palestinians because I I feel their sadness. I I live their life. I put myself in their shoes. But the most of the time, I like to surprise people to see their expressions. Like I always scare my mom, like when she's mm. trying to sleep. Mm. <laughs> I pull her leg. I do something because I like to see an expression. You know. Yeah. I don't like calm. Like I like everything crazy because we grew up in a in a household with seven. seven. My mom had two daughters, and my, her her and my mom, her and my dad had five kids together. So a total of eight. S eight siblings. Okay. Eight siblings. So our house was always ruckus. Yeah. Mm. So I don't like quietness. Yeah. So a person who comes from a house with only one child is not going to like my household because like, this is too much going it's on. Too much going on, yeah. No, I like that. So, but then, but then you can you say then most of it is so so it's real. Well, it's just it's hundred okay. percent real. It's all real. It's all real. Yeah, but a lot of people beefing you there. <laughs> um, honestly, in the big, I tell you something. <laughs> it was real. I, I, I tell you, you something. Are you friends with them? Are you friends with? Them? You know Listen, we we in the end of the in the end of the day, it's called a reality show. Show. Yeah. Okay. So we know the cameras are there. It's part of our lives is happening, but we we have to give some type of entertainment. Yes. So when I when I overreact, it's me, but I'm also I'm also want everyone to see that to feel what I feel. So I have to react in a certain way. In a certain way, to you get know. That point across. Yeah. Yeah. And are then, you friends? Are you friends with all with most of? The, honestly, I love them all at the all moment, them. except yeah. one. I'm not going to mention her name. Yeah. But uh, yeah. this happens every once in, in a while. In real life, you don't. In real, in real life, life yeah, she's been blocked. She's been blocked. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go check with your with your blo on. Yeah, out there. yeah. She's blocked. Everyone. Yeah. <laughs> she's blocked. And then if you if you realize, it's, yeah. When we first started this, it would give it away who who I was speaking about. But anyway. Okay. So that's it. But okay. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Yeah. Since, since you've been here, I've heard you learned some new words as well. Okay, but before before we get into that, I will take curse here. No, they taught me yeah, bad words. Everyone, before we, they be taught me fuck off. I was about to, me. I, I was about to go into a different direction. <laughs> fuck off. No, fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> what so what did they tell you? What, 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 what does that mean? I want to know. What did they tell you? What does it, that mean? Apparently, I guess it means fuck off. Fuck off, yeah. Yeah, but it's like fuck off. Fuck off. It's with the accent. <laughs> it sounds better. <laughs> any, any other ones Any other ones you've learned? Liquor. Liquor? Liquor. 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 It's like very nice. Like yeah. school. Um, what else? Mm. Fuchi or fucha? Can't remember. What? Fuchi. Fuchi. <laughs> <laughs> Well, which is what probably this will probably be the same as they as taught me off. a lot, honestly. But like, like, probably the same as fuck off, though. Yeah, but I love it. I love normally, it. They normally tell, they normally say that to dogs, though, when it's gotta go away. Like, for tech, for tech, <laughs> for tech. But one thing I yeah. do love is like you know the um, the amount of joy that I see in South Africans. Yeah. Um, I was very emotional in the march that we had the other day, 
because I remembered what South Africa went through. Yeah, the apartheid. And remembering what it went through and seeing the people now currently together mm -hmm. is the only hope I have in my heart for Palestine. Mm. South Africa, to me, it's the only hope that I have for Palestine and for Jews and Muslims to live together and Christians to live together in, in peace, service. in harmony. Inshallah. This is my only hope. Mm. So that's why the first country that I officially visited as a Dubai Bling star was South Africa. Oh, so okay. And I'm truly grateful and truly proud of every single South African for what they have contributed to getting rid of the apartheid mm. and living together in peace and harmony. Pretty and no country is perfect. Yeah. But I believe, I truly believe in this country and the future of this country because of its people and their resilience. You might just ask some of the people who they voted for. So. <laughs> we're not going to get into that. We're gonna, we're gonna, we'll I now, did, now I, when I get into that, we'll talk about that. One no now. DA, no <laughs> DA. <laughs> Listen, and then... Um, Who's you, that lady that I'm going to meet in Johannesburg that I yeah. want to meet, that I love, I keep reposting her? What's her name? Now, Lady Pando. She's amazing. <gasps> I'm in love. Talk about while we are, while we are here, you know. I even asked, I told them, like, I want to meet know, her. she so doesn't have a seat in parliament anymore. Like, she's like, because as, as the She don't need a seat in parliament. She's in my heart. The result came out now, so. She's in my that's heart. Quite, that's, that's quite devastating for a lot of people. Because, no problem, no problem. Yeah. Whenever, whenever, whenever there's a bump in the road, it only makes us to be stronger yeah. and to be pushed more for, to be harder, you oh, know, to be you. better. So I think this is just a sign. See, whenever she, whenever something bad happens to you, it's, unleashing a lion from deep within and i truly believe in her and i know that whatever bad thing happened to her it's only a turning point to make her fight harder and i 100 percent believe in her and she has my full support 100 listen and then now um you married mm -hmm. how long you how long you been married a year a year now yeah um tell us about that just a little man you just... know what's funny is that i was i so i wanted to get married so bad and mm -hmm. just want to get married and have kids because i love children Okay. When I when I'm with a child, I am a child. Like I I mm. become just as they are, you know. And my brothers told me they're like, "Don't do it." I'm like, "Why?" So they're they've like, been they are they all married. All my brothers are married, but like just they tell me, "Don't do it." Like okay. we envy you. Like we love your life. Like we want to. Yeah. Yeah. Just better. Like stay stay chill. Stay happy. Okay. You know. And these people feel but like it's all another world. Yeah. Marriage. <laughs> I tell you thing? something. Marriage as a celebrity is very difficult. Okay. Um. Because. But your wife's not. Your wife's not a celebrity. Or anything or is she? No, she's not. She's a completely okay. simple, down to earth, uh, typical Emirati from Abu Dhabi. Mm. Not in the not in the spotlight and anything. But the thing is, what makes uh my life a lot difficult is we me and my wife are never in the same place meaning like mentally physically everything it's like she has her job and i have my business and my life right yeah. and it's hard it's she's always far away like me when we gotta mentally meet and discuss something mm -hmm. she's worried about what people think about her in the office and i'm worried about world issues <laughs> Yeah. So the gap is huge. So we find that issue constantly, you know, and um, be going into the mall and people randomly like grabbing me mm. and just telling her, oh, we love your husband. Doesn't make her happy. So it's, it's, bit, it's very difficult. And so I realized- then, But then what inspired you to get married in the first place then? I mean, I, uh, obviously, considering, considering on, guys, Islamically, Islamically yes. uh, when, when we get married, we, we get married to complete our religion. Yes. Um, because dating is forbidden in our religion. Mm. Uh, so I wanted to share my life with someone that can travel the world with me and that can enjoy the things that I see. Mm. Um, that's the reason why I got married. Plus, I want to start a family. You know, I'm I'm 36 years old. 36. It's yeah. time to start a family. I want to have a family, and that's why I got married. So you think you're gonna make some kids? When are you gonna make? When are you gonna I make? Wa Honestly, after uh, the whole October 7th thing, I kind of was discouraged to have children. About having children. Because I'm very much outspoken. I didn't want my kids to have to pay the price of what I say today. Yes. I don't want them to travel or go somewhere or in school be punished by or whatever. Of, yeah. I just, kind of I didn't, I, I, I felt that whatever I'm doing, I should be responsible for it and no one from my family should have to pay the price. Yeah. No, I caught you. Talking about um, religion and things like that, I see you, I see you out in, in Mecca for Umrah. Yes. What was that like? Tell us about your experience. So um, normally I like to go to uh, Mecca for New Year's, yeah. uh, during New Year's, because New Year's is a time that 
as you know, as a nightlife, everyone wants to party, mm. right? So I said, I'm pretty much the opposite of people and say, you guys go party. Let me go for, for thanking Allah for everything that he's given me. Yeah. Um, I like to take my mom because it's one of our favorite destinations. Okay. Um, last time we went, it was me, my wife, my mom, and my nieces because my nieces live with me in the house because their mother got remarried and went to Germany. And in my family, is you, you shouldn't leave the house until you actually get married. Yes. We're very much traditional family. Um, so I love Umrah. It's the only place in the world where I actually feel no worry. You've, have you been many times? Was it, I've been good. This is my last time I went was my seventh time. Seventh time. Yeah. Yeah. Hajj now? Sorry? On Hajj, you've been on We Hajj were supposed yet? to go to Hajj this year. Okay. Um, but we didn't make it in time because my mom, I promised her that we'll go. So inshallah, inshallah. I mean, we put it in our hearts to go next year. I mean, for someone and for people that haven't been that haven't been to to Mecca as of yet, you know, just what's what's your or even Medina, just to give them a little bit of Mecca, insight. Mecca and Medina are the only two places in the world that you'll go to that you cannot. I cannot describe the feeling when you see the Kaaba for the first time. Yeah, you start you you feel as if you your body weighs a, a weight of a feather. Mm. Something inside of you will make you start to cry because you see the amount of humanity that is in the one place. Mm. No matter what's your color of your skin, what's your race, what's your sexuality, no matter what, everyone is there together wearing the same. Mm. Just the towel for men and for women, they're wearing their abayas. The simplicity and the beauty of the place is absolutely priceless. And the way you feel is that you don't, you're not afraid of death. That's why a lot of old people, a lot of people who go to, to Mecca and Medina, they want to die there because they know that it's such a holy place. Such a holy place. And they're not scared about crossing the streets and this and that. So one difference between throwing yourself in front of a car and one thing of you wanting to die there. But some people actually, because they just don't want to go back and be buried in their country, they actually throw themselves in front of a car. And I've seen it happen. Um, other than that, it's beautiful. The food's not great, but that's not what we're there for. We're there for <laughs> prayer. <laughs> can't find good food because then yeah. people don't understand why. Why can't we find good food? Yeah. It's because there's too many people in one place. Too many people, yeah. So businesses, in order for them to thrive, have to make money by numbers because the rent's very expensive. Okay. So they have to push as much food out. And when you push food out quickly, you don't make the best food. So, so the food's Simple. not that good. And but it's beautiful. Yeah. Medina is a, is a calm. It's like... Mecca is hustle and bustle. Medina is calming, quiet, slow paced. Um, you feel the holy presence there. Um, honestly, if I ever gonna retire anywhere, I'll retire in Medina. Medina, yeah. yeah. Okay. So now, I mean, I think you've got we got most of that now. What most of what you wanted to talk about? Are there anything that you want to share with South Africa, Cape Town? Your experience with globe travel? Uh, I honestly, first, I would like to appreciate globe travel, especially the owner, uh, Ms. Farah. She's absolutely an amazing person. Yeah. Um, and her kindness, her respect, and her welcoming me into her own home will forever gain me as a family member for her and her family. And I think when we travel, we are the most vulnerable time of our life because we are basically in a place where we don't know where we are. Yeah. When someone welcomes you, for me, that's priceless. I'm forever going to be grateful, and I recommend everyone to um, to work with Globe. Um, we don't find these companies much often. It's a mm. family-owned company that the owner is managing it herself. So it brings humanity into into business, and this is what I love. Okay, cool. Listen, I got a few. Would you rather questions before you go? No. Yep, so sure. these are just like random ones. You can decide. Um, you just choose one and tell me the reason for your answer, right? Um, would you rather collaborate with a famous rapper who can't rap or a famous singer who can't sing? Singer. So why that one instead of the other? I think just singer for me just it's close to my heart. Rapping, I just don't know what they're saying. Okay. <laughs> um, would you rather have a hairstyle made entirely of glitter or wear sunglasses indoors wherever you go? Glasses. In glasses indoor. Yeah. Uh, why that instead of glitter in the air? Glitter in the air is just it's ruining nature. In your hair? In my hair? In your hair. No, I don't like anything in my hair. I never put any products in my hair. Okay. Because I like to put my hands through it. So I don't yes. want to have glitter in my thing and I'm going to taste the glitter. No. Taste. Okay. Bad idea. Um, <laughs> would you rather have a hair dryer blow directly at your face? Um, 
Well, for every for every video shoot you do, like whatever, or perf- or perform on a balancing unicycle wherever you go. Unicycle. Unicycle. It's more healthy. It's more healthy. <laughs> okay. Talking about that, I see uh, gymming as well. Every day. Every day. Not while I'm here, though. Yeah. Because I'm enjoying my time, but almost every day. When what I'm Cape Town food have you eaten? What South African food have you had since you've been they here? They keep. Uh, the owner, uh, Farah, the owner's son, the moment he met me in the airport, he gave me a bag full of sweets. Bag full of sweets, okay. And I'm not supposed to be eating sugar, but it was a bad idea, but I loved it. And there's this thing, it's like a spotted egg. <laughs> spickled spickled egg. egg. I saw you posted it the other. That thing was so egg. good. I yes. love it. I'm going to take a bag full of that back home. Everyone has been giving me candy and sweets. Yesterday, the African food was absolutely amazing. Where did it go? Uh, golden. Golden. Okay. Oh, yes. It's like yes, an African yes. like type. We did the drums, we did the dance and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to uh, try more food now. Why and every year did you do all that thing? I also, I want to try, you guys call, okay. you guys call, you guys call fufu a different thing here, right? A fufu. What's a fufu? Fufu is a Nigerian food. Fufu. I like fufu. Fufu? Yeah. I don't know, bro. I've never made. I've never made fufu. <laughs> basically, it's like I've never uh, made fufu. Basically, huh? it's like this starch thing. It's like they use it as a bread in Nigeria. Okay. They dip it in like sauce and they eat it. it looks so good. Pup. It's, here it's called pup. Oh, it's p- can we say pup? <laughs> in Dubai, they call it fufu. They call it fufu as well. Yeah, they call it fufu. They do don't call it like pup. It Do people like it? Like- yeah, you go to African restaurant, you eat yourself some fufu. That's interesting. They said it's good to get. It's good for the booty. You get a big butt. Yeah. Look, some people like they know, but I know some our people will be like, nah, I don't get pop. I know what it is. They have it in KFC. <laughs> yeah, no? they do have it in KFC. Uh, but I think okay. KFC is not boycottless, no? This is a halal one. If the owners are are pro Palestinian, we'll go there. Okay, next one. Um, would you rather have? Would you rather have your hair made of spaghetti that regrows every night, or have shoes? Or oh, have shoes that are always covered in marshmallow fluff. Oh, marshmallow fluff. You you happy with yeah, that, that one? Yeah, that sounds comfortable. Yeah. Uh, as long as the marshmallow is not a pork, a gelatin. Okay. If it's beef, it's okay. If it's halal. Um, would you rather? I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a odd one, man. I'm gonna give you a bit of an odd one. Yalla. Let's see. Okay. Would you rather kill ten Zionist people now? Or eat two full pigs. I told you I'm gonna give you an odd one. That's obvious. I told you that's give obvious. You odd one. I okay. Just made it. I just on one up. condition. I made it up. On one condition. Yes. The Zionists have to be the baby killers. They no, can't be a regular Zionist. They have to be the ones who kill the babies. I will kill them and anyone that they love. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yes, them. <laughs> so you say you're not going close to the pigs. No, I'm not. Con- I don't care. <laughs> it's not for a lot of. No, the I'm pigs. not. I don't want the pigs. No, 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 no. <laughs> I would rather I rather have baby killers out of this world than leave those two pigs to enjoy eating the garbage around. Never mind the ones that I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you ones off the top of it. So now, um, all right, either you have to the, the 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 thing is you have to move to let's say you have to move to Tel Aviv, mm. renounce your family, never be able to see them ever again. Mm. Your new identity is mm. it's um, Ibrahim. Mm. He's from Tel Aviv now. Mm. Or stay, stay in your homeland, but they'll be completely poor and have no money whatsoever. So you could go, but you can't see your family again. But if you stay, you're going to be completely poor with all those, with all your family. Completely members. poor because my wealth is my family. Yes. Being with my mom mm. is what makes me rich. Even if I don't have a dollar to my name. Okay. Just seeing her and making sure she's okay, making sure she's happy. is Actually, I've always dreamed of just living in an island, just me and my family without okay. anyone. You'd be fine with that. I'll be fine with that. I'm just tired of the world, honestly. Mm. I'm sick and I'm tired. It's disgusting. What 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 did the ideal world look like for you? An ideal world? Yeah. And I a world based on equality. Mm. That no person has to feel different than the other person based on what they look like or where they come from. Mm. This is an ideal world for me. I think equality is the foundation of humanity. To feel equal and to feel existent and to feel recognized as a human being is more important than anything else in the world. Yeah. Once we solve that issue, the world can go into places where we never even dreamed of. Mm. Do you know in Islam it says that the current science, what we currently know is as if it's a drop in the ocean. We cannot experience anything further in science and research 
if we have this behavior of thinking that we're better than each other, yes. are you this, are you that, and I'm this and I'm that. The moment we start to humanize each other mm -hmm. is the moment we start to progress as a nation and we can solve the majority of problems of what the world has, including global warming and every other single issue and conflict in the world. Yeah. The problem with humanity currently is what we call in Arabic and Islam is takabur, means that I'm bigger than you, I'm better than you, I'm richer than you. That's the problem. Kibur, pride. Pride. Yeah. Every employee who is currently working, if they worked for a boss who respected them and who treated them as human beings, mm -hmm. will work 10 times harder because they know their boss deserves it. So an ideal world is, an, is a world based on equality and equal rights for every single human being and not having a double standard based on anything else. I got you. Listen, I got another one. I got another, I got another crazy one here for you. Would you rather have? You have to be married to four different women and it's all arranged marriages, right? So who gets to arrange these marriages? Well, your brothers, let's say, for intersect. Your brothers get to arrange four. I'm saying four because Islamic religious say- Yeah, so my brothers get to choose who the wives your are? Your brothers get to choose who okay, the wives are. Okay, that sounds the, good. They know the, my taste. Who the wives are? Uh-huh. Okay, we're gonna, say, we're gonna let mom. We're gonna let mom decide who's the, who's the four wives. But we have, but we say, I'm saying four because you need to understand the scale of- Yeah, it's four, yeah, yeah. It's four wives yeah. that you might be super unhappy with- Okay. For the rest of your life. Yeah. Or you can be gay and run away and never, and never see your family again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think this is the question I asked someone okay. this before. I've okay. asked someone this before. I know my mom will choose right for me. Yes. So I will choose the four wives. Even if you're unhappy with all four of them. Even if I'm happy with all four of them. Why? Because I think well, it's more entertaining. Yes. And I think I can have four times the amount of children. Full, okay. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. So I think it sounds it sounds more like me. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna give you the last two before we go. Okay. Would you rather wait? Would you rather have a third eye at the back of your head, yeah. or have a second mouth? On a your second mouth. A second mouth on your forehead. <laughs> you remember this is these are these are an eye, eye, an eye, eye. Yeah. yeah, on your head. Because that's like you know why would I have why I have another mouth? My mouth already is too much. <laughs> Can't deal with a second. Imagine one. two. Like, shut that one up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, They'll be arguing with each other. <laughs> do you listen? Do you listen to any music? I stopped listening to music. You stopped listening to music. So this, okay, so then I can't ask you that question because the question would have been, um, where's this one now? Would you rather I listen have to your Anish. favorite song stuck in your head forever or never be able to listen to music again? Never be able to listen to music again. What are you listening to these days? Um, Anashid. Anashid. Anashid and Quran. Who, so what, Nasheed, who are you listening to? So there is one in, uh, from the UAE. Um, his name is Abu Bakr. Abu He's Bakr. a really amazing, does um, mm. really amazing Nasheed. And a lot of ones about free Palestine and stuff. It keeps me motivated, it keeps me happy. And mm. without, because I, I was recently, there's a, uh, one of my friends in, uh, in Dubai, it was a DJ in America. Mm. And he was like kind of atheist and he found religion and he started researching about it. And he came to me and he told me one day, he said that, in a lot of music, I'm not saying all music, but I'm yeah. saying the majority of music is using sound waves um, to control us and to change our emotion and our um, and our feelings. Mm -hmm. And he said, just stop music for a week. Think of it as a health, like you would stop sugar for a week and see what happens to your body. So I stopped music for a week and I realized during that week, I was able to get a lot of work done because I listened to music in the gym okay. for two hours. I listened to music in the car. So not listening to music in the car allowed me to finish a lot of my pending work and do phone calls while I'm in the car. Okay. Yeah. And I realized that when I listen to music, I kind of think things, don't think things through carefully. So do you think, do you think things like, that's why something like Ramadan is very important? Ramadan like is very important like because it restarts like, you. Yeah, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people, a lot of people think that Ramadan is just about not about not eating. You yes. don't know that Ramadan is not listening to Fasting music. The eyes, the ears, everything. Uh, cleaning your eyes, your ears, and everything. But um, all my life before during Ramadan, I was listening to music, even mm. though I shouldn't have. And I used to always be annoyed sometimes because my mom would come in the car. I would have music on. She'll always turn it off, right? Mm. And I never understood. Like she always, oh, I have a headache. Only when I stopped listening to music, I understood her. So I kind of felt bad because even though I did listen to her when she would turn it off, I kind of didn't like her doing yes. that. But now I understand when you, like even yesterday we were doing high tea and uh, what was that place? Mount Nelson. Yeah. yeah. It was amazing. And I literally, I was like, can I pay the pianoist to stop? Like, I'm like, I was going to go give him money. And tell, yeah. I was going to go give him yeah. money. I'm like, just you stop. have an important phone call. Just go take it. Okay. I'll give you whatever you want to stop it because it was really giving me a headache. 
Oh, okay, because you're so used to not. I'm listening. so used to like peace and quiet where I don't want to listen to music anymore. Mm. But people mistake. People are like, oh, well, yesterday you were at um, a golden restaurant. You were dancing to that. It's different when you're outside with people. You're experiencing something for the first time. and it's Yeah. About so, so yeah, you do it and that's it. But it's, I'm saying I don't listen to music. Mean, I don't listen to music in the car. I don't listen to music at the gym where I used to listen to before. But if, if in a public place and there's music playing, I can't force them to stop it because now I'm infringing on my belief or my liking on other people. On other people. It's yeah. not nice. In my cafe in Dubai, I play music because even though you don't listen, but I don't listen, but other people want it. Yeah, so I cannot. It's very selfish of me to take my belief and to enforce it on other people. Yeah. When they want to believe in what I believe, they can let them to believe what they want now. Yeah. So how how, how close? How I mean, how dear is your family to you? Like a lot. Like do you love your family a lot? They are everything that I have, and if I don't have my family, then I'm worth zero. So now I'm gonna do the final question. Mm -hmm. You can save every single person in Palestine. Or your family, someone else to die on your side. Are you willing to let your family go or everyone else in the I'll let side? my family go. I'll let myself go, actually. Yeah. I've said many times that if I can sacrifice my life for the freedom of Palestine, I would have did it a long time ago. You've said everything you needed to say. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You. Thank you so much. Brahim, the blooming man. I said the Maya, that's the PSA podcast. Thank you for your time, brother. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you.